One of our past interviews has been with a man who lives in the city of Arad, Israel, named Jeff Barnard. In that interview, which we will post again on the Root Source website below this video, Jeff describes a bit about the city of Arad and then goes on to tell his story of coming to Israel. If you remember that story, a major component of what encouraged Jeff to make Aliyah was his chance meeting with a Christian artist who had an idea so outlandish, yet potentially amazing, that Jeff wanted to do whatever he could to help make it a reality. That idea today is called the Fountain of Tears, and the artist is named Rick Winicky. Now, on the day that I interviewed Jeff in his home, the Fountain of Tears wasn't open. But since then, I had a chance to visit it, not just by myself, but with Gadon. Rick Winicky has created one of the most unique art exhibits I've ever seen. On the day we visited, Rick was out of town, so Rick's wife gave the presentation. She's on the right. And our particular showing included some special Christian music. The uniqueness of this exhibit is the bringing together of two massively famous events in world history, the crucifixion of Christ and the Holocaust. I am not going to try to do justice to this exhibit, but instead I'd like Jeff to explain it to you in his own words. If you ever have a chance to go to a rod, this exhibit on the outskirts of town will move you. At this point, I'm going to bid you farewell, and we will play their video, which you can also play separately on YouTube by searching for The Fountain of Tears. This is Bob O'Dell saying, Shalom. The Fountain of Tears is a sculptured dialogue of suffering between the crucifixion and the holocaust. The Fountain of Tears is a wall, 60 feet long and 12 feet high. It has seven panels made of Jerusalem stone and six pillars of field stones. Facing each one of the panels are seven life-size bronze figures. The title, The Fountain of Tears, is taken from a verse in the Bible from the book of Jeremiah. The prophet is crying out to God, O Lord, that my head were a spring of water, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. The seven panels are high-relief sculptures, each depicting a different crucifixion scene. Each crucifixion panel relates to each one of the last seven statements spoken by Jesus in the last moments of his life. The six pillars of stones act as dividers between each of the seven panels. These pillars represent a memorial to the six million Jews who perished in the Holocaust. The seven bronze figures symbolize a Holocaust survivor his head is shaved, and he is dressed in the striped clothes of the concentration camp. Each figure is responding and identifying to each word spoken from the crucifixion. There is also water that very slowly trickles over the pillars of stones, symbolizing the tears from the cry of Jeremiah. The water from each of the pillars is channeled out of the courtyard to irrigate six olive trees. At the south end of the courtyard is a sculpture called Gethsemane. This depicts the struggle over the cup of suffering, the beginning of the crucifixion. At the opposite end of the courtyard are two sculptures, the butterfly and the empty cup, both symbolizing resurrection. All of these elements come together to tell a story, to relate a possibility, to ask a question. Could the crucifixion and the Holocaust have something in common with each other's pain? 
Now it has been said over and over again historically that the suffering of the crucifixion actually created the suffering for the other, the Jewish people, in the Holocaust. So it is important to understand the process of artistic creation in this work in order to understand its communication. The artist has taken these last seven words of Jesus and has done a creative meditation on each one to see if there is identification which would somehow connect the two. The artist, Rick Winicky, is originally Canadian. He came to Israel as a 21-year-old drawn by his fascination with the rising of the Jewish state out of the ashes of the Holocaust. He sees himself as a believer in Jesus and has lived in Israel now for over 30 years. He deeply understands the conflict of the crucifixion and the Holocaust that he has brought together in this work.